Yep. So I'm here talking to Dan, Dan, I'm sorry. here talking to Tom and Dan about Axiom Verge. We're going to tell you about how the game got started and just, just about the game in general. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Tom Happ, and I'm the creator of the game. I started working on it about five years ago. And On weekends. Yeah, starting, you know, evenings and weekends. I, I had a day job over at Petroglyph Games making Grey Goo and other RTS-related titles. Okay. After about four years of working on it like that, I started shipping it around and was eventually uh, picked up by the Sony Pub Fund. So at that point, I was able to stop working on it part-time and started working on it full-time. And the rest is pretty much history. Okay. And your influences for it clearly are a, 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 a Metroid type of game. Yeah, it's you know sort of my, as they call it, a love letter to the old eight-bit games: Metroid, Contra, Blaster Master, Bionic yeah, Commando. Master, yeah. uh, you know, a whole assortment of, of games that I, I tried to bring together as best as I could to kind of create the dream game, or my dream game anyway. Yeah, so um, so I started working with Tom about six years ago, uh, six years, six months ago, uh, helping him with the, the business aspects of releasing Axiom Verge and kind of the story of him, you know, the way he was telling me about how he like, first he was piecing together all those different parts of old games just to see how the pieces, you know, just really deconstructing those to see why they were so much fun and what was fun about them and what pieces would go well together and what wouldn't. And and then as the gameplay emerged, um, there were a lot more new things that uh, that Tom was able to add. Like probably the, the one of the better one known ones is um, he was looking at some of those old games and watching like how some of them would glitch, um, not by design, just because they were old and there would be some corruption. And like you could stumble upon areas that you weren't meant to see. And so... So that, you know, Tom was able to build that into the game and create uh, a tool called the Address Disruptor, which is commonly known as the Glitch Ray, where you can glitch certain parts of the world and, like, all the enemies, if they glitch, they'll respond differently. And so it opens up a lot of experimentation about how different things within that world react. Address as an address space. Exactly, yeah, like in the, ad like the memory address. Yeah. So narratively, um, who, who are you and sort of what, what, what is, what, what's the story behind Axiom Verge? So the fiction is that you're a scientist who experiences a lab accident. Uh, he wakes up in this strange alien world after that. And most of the plot is just about you trying to figure out how you got there, what this place is, what your role in everything is. Uh, unfolding more or less like a mystery science fiction style yeah so there, there's also some interesting like existential elements like you'll um, if you die in the game uh, the first time you die you'll you'll wake up in the in a save point chamber where you had saved previously and you wonder what happens in this character that you meet in the game uh, called Elsa Nova uh, who's speaking to you telepathically will kind of informs you that oh it's you know it's no problem we saved your your mind state and uh we just uh we just uh, brought you back to life and we just restored your your mind state directly we to your just body. happened to do that for you yes okay. exactly so so then you know it opens up questions like am i the same person anymore is this something am i you know a new clone of myself and some of those questions also get investigated as part of that and some remain unanswered and just kind of um, kind of lend itself to the overall fiction of the of that world. It just reminded me of a game that came out, what is it called, where you have the gun that makes the four clones? I beat it, I can't think of the name of it. Oh, uh, um, I know the one you're talking about. Um, I'm thinking the fall, but that's something different, which is also good. But anyway, I thought, but we're here talking yeah. about Axiom Bird. I'm sorry. I just, yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. yeah. No, I know what you're talking about, was, though. though. That's another good one, though. But looking at the actual um, the sprite of the character, I'm getting sort of a, of a Ripley vibe. From the way she's sort of holding the weapon, is that something that's intentional, or am I just reading too much into it? Uh, uh, sorry, I, I didn't hear that. I'm getting sort of a Ripley vibe from the way she's holding on. From Alien? Oh, from Alien? 
Um, I'm just, I, you know, that's the, I, cause I'm crazy, so I say things. Yeah, I, I don't know, because I think wasn't Ripley's weapon, like, uh, didn't have a sling over her shoulder, and then she's like... like a heart, like a big I, suit harness kind of... Yeah, I'm trying to remember. I like this, I guess the size of it, but... Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a big gun. It's a... Definitely. It's a, it, and it's actually not just a gun. There's, um, as you play through the game, you get these additional power-ups for that weapon. It's basically programs that that, uh, that that gun can can execute. And so it does a lot of things, not just um, shooting, but also it'll produce fire, produce, like I said, the, the glitches. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So there are a lot of things that... It's a very versatile tool uh, developed with a, this alien technology. Uh, something that you're looking to maybe have people do speed runs for? Uh, that's correct. Yeah, there's a speed run mode just for that. Oh, wow. Okay. That mode strips out all of the dialogue and story and basically just turns it into a raw action platformer kind of game. So you can compete. Uh, with other people and not have to worry about the interruptions. It also strips out some of the randomly generated rooms that we have in the game just so that it'll put everyone on the same footing in terms of how much ground they need to cover and what there is for them to find. That's interesting. In terms of difficulty, um, is it something that is, is kind of geared towards a more hardcore player or you think anybody can kind of give in and understand the mechanics enough to make some progress? Well, the game is somewhat long. I've I've seen it take from seven to thirty hours. Wow, so that's quite the range. The, the difficulty is is pretty medium, I would say. And, you know, just to keep it from you know wiping out all of your time. Uh, but then there's a hard mode that you have the option of trying, and that's going to ramp it up significantly. Uh, you know, my my methodology there was to play the game, put it, make it hard enough that I couldn't beat it, and then like gradually make it easier until I could beat it and I'm you know I'm not I'm the maker of the game but I'm not the best player in the world but I'm certainly not the worst so I'm hoping that you know it'll be a, a nice challenge without being too overbearing uh, and then probably the really hardcore gamers you know will find it moderate yeah. so what one a couple of things that people can do for the difficulty Tom already mentioned the the hard mode, um, <clears throat> but one of the reasons there's such a wide range in the amount of time that people take to complete it is um, the um, there's a, a big focus of the game. Probably the biggest focus of the game is in exploration and finding a lot of the hidden hidden um, power ups that you can find throughout the world. And people who spend a lot of time looking for all of those will spend more time playing. They'll also have an easier time towards the end of the game when there's more challenging bosses, more challenging enemies to fight because you'll be super powerful. You'll have lots of health. Um, your firepower will be that much better. Uh, but if you really want a challenge, you can just try to speed run through it, getting as few of the power-ups as possible. And, uh, and I've done that too just to see how quickly I could beat it. And then there comes a point in the game when... I realized, all right, I have to go backtrack and pick up some of those power-ups I skipped over because I'm not going to be able to beat it anymore. And you are just playing as this one particular character. You're not finding anybody and becoming them. or You are just one character, just one person's story. Yeah, you just play as the same character the whole time. You get various upgrades that, you know, rather significantly change his capabilities, but he's still the same guy. There are other players, and it's a single-player game. Okay. It looks great. I've been uh, ever since, and you know, I know the, fo the folks at Sony have been hyping this thing up for a long time, and it, I can see why. Yeah, it's like a lot of fun. Yeah, we're really excited about it. So it's coming out on the 31st, which is for Tom. Um, it's been a long road, five years yeah. um, for me. I've been on it six months, and it already feels like a long time for me. So I can only imagine what it's like for Tom. So, and I'm actually now personally really excited just to watch everyone streaming their videos of their playthroughs and seeing all the things that they uncover and it's just a really exciting time definitely yeah thank you for your time thank you so much thank you.